quick question. Does performance increase with experience? That is, does a university lecturer such as myself you know, become better at lecturing with more experience? Or does a doctor become better at doctoring with experience? Well, intuitively, you would think that to be the case. You're more experienced, the better you become. Your practice makes perfect, and your wage does, after all, depend on your experience, among other things. However, empirically speaking, if you look at the data, if you look at the evidence, you will actually quite often find that there is no relationship between performance and experience. And sometimes you will even find a slight negative relationship. Now, why is that? Well, the answer is that uh, experience is only useful if certain conditions are being fulfilled. And uh, one of these conditions has to do with feedback. If there is no feedback, then experience in general does not increase your performance. So you need to have feedback. However, there are also certain conditions within feedback that needs to be uh, present in order for feedback to enable you to become better from experience. So let's talk about that. So far, I've been basing the discussion on uh, these three books. Uh, but going forward, I'll be basing the discussion around uh, Gardner 2005, which is the curriculum book in my uh, project management uh, course. Taking a minor step back here, the reason we care about feedback in uh, project management is that feedback can be used to control and regulate systems. And a project is essentially just a system. I'm pretty sure you know what feedback is, but just to make absolutely sure that we are on the same page, uh, let me show a diagram I made here just to illustrate the process here. So we have some kind of uh, process that is generating some kind of output. So in feedback, what we do, we take these outputs and we uh, compare it to some kind of controlled data. And then uh, one of two things happens. If the output is not satisfactorily good, well, then we need to go back and redo the process and create a new output. On the other hand, if it is satisfactory, well, then we can just continue with our day. That is feedback. So why do feedback sometimes uh, completely fail at controlling a system? Well, there are especially two factors here that uh, are detrimental to the effectiveness of feedback as a control mechanism. The first of these two factors is time lag, which is the delay between the output of a system and the subsequent adjustment. And the second factor here is strength or intensity of the feedback control correction. Admittedly, this sounds a little bit wishy-washy, uh, but luckily Gardner is providing us with an example, so let me just uh, read that to you. Consider, for example, the effects of a delay in the operation of a simple thermostat that regulates room temperature by turning on either a heating or a cooling unit. If the thermostat operates with a substantial time lag, it will permit the room to get too hot before activating the cooling unit. Likewise, it will permit the room to get too cold before activating the heating unit. Thus, time lags will cause increased oscillation in room temperature. Oscillation problems become especially troublesome if the feedback correction is particularly strong. For instance, if very hot air is introduced to correct for a drop in temperature, and very cold air is introduced to correct for a rise in temperature. Under these conditions, delayed feedback will exacerbate the destabilizing effects of temperature fluctuation. Thus, time lag can seriously compromise the effectiveness of feedback regulation. It's a little bit more understandable with the example. However, I still think it's kind of a little bit wishy-washy, so I want to look at one more example that is a little bit more detailed and uh, lengthy. Uh, I'm not going to take this example from uh, Gardner 2005. We're instead going to take this from a video game. And rather listening to me, we can uh, hear it from one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, Ross Scott, uh, on his YouTube channel, Accursed Farms. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what uh, he has to uh, show us. Oh, that gives me such a goosebump listening to that soundtrack. So tell us, Ross, uh, what game are we uh, looking at today? Welcome to Ross's Game Dungeon! 
Today I'll be talking about the first game on this show in 3D. Test Drive 3, the passion of the test drive. And what kind of uh, game is that? This is a driving game, if you somehow haven't figured that out. Ah, huh, a driving game. So what are, we, what are we dealing with here? Okay, so here's the game. Glorious 3D vector graphics. Now I want to talk more about the graphics too, but I have to talk about the gameplay in this game first because it refuses to be ignored. Now, like most racing games, you race along the road and try to make it to the finish line. In addition to that, you also have to worry about the cops that will ticket you if you drive too fast, crashing into things, and dealing with other traffic. Right now I'm only doing a time trial, but if you're racing opponents, they have to deal with the same obstacles as you. So before we get into the details of this uh, driving game, I just want to establish that a car is also a system. A project is a system and a car is a system. And you need to be able to control your systems, right? So you need to be able to control a car. And you are using feedback as a control mechanism when you are driving. Uh, you're also using other things such as uh, feed forward, but we're going to focus here on feedback. So uh, let us uh, look at uh, how the driving, how the controlling of the car is in this uh, video game. Now this game also has an additional feature you won't read about in any ad for it, nor in the review for it when it came out, and that's this game isn't so much about racing as it is a drunk driving simulator. Now what do I mean by that? Well, the acceleration and braking are good, the physics are great for the year it came out, and the steering is probably the worst I've ever seen in any driving game I've played in my life. Now maybe you think I'm exaggerating, like those people who say worst thing ever about everything. But no, I'm really not. The steering likes to accelerate hard in whatever direction you're turning. It doesn't make much of a difference if you're going 10 miles an hour or 100. There's not even much of an analogy to what it's like in reality, but I may have thought of one. Pretend you're on a motorcycle or a dirt bike, and the bike is stationary, but you have the front wheel turned at an angle, 45 degrees or even more. Now pretend you hit the gas and give that bike a real jackrabbit start. You have great traction, and you just peel out of there taking off as fast as you possibly can. You're going to fly off in that direction you're steering, and maybe even wreck yourself before you've gone anywhere, right? Well, that's what the normal steering in this game feels like. You know what? I don't even have to explain it to you. Take a look at this. Wow, those are some good donuts considering I'm not even breaking, right? Oh, and hey, now's a good time to mention this game has an instant replay feature. Wow, that's some impressive handling for a car, huh? Or any vehicle, really, besides those teacup rides at amusement parks. Anyway, I had to talk about this from the start because this permeates everything you do in this game. So when you see me crashing because I swerved for absolutely nothing, it's not because I can see ghosts and you can't, it's just how this game is. Really, it's so fundamental, it's kind of incredible. I mean, this is a driving game. Spending more than five minutes to code and test the steering might have been a good idea. It would be like playing a first person shooter where your gun backfires every third shot, or a flight sim where the wings on your plane fall off. So the driving is bad, really bad. Okay, so it's a driving game and the steering is horrendous. But why is it so bad? I think we can analyze this using here the theory of uh, feedback as a control mechanism of the system or of the car. So remember there are two factors here that kind of contribute to diminishing the effectiveness of feedback as a control mechanism. Uh, the first one is uh, time lag and the second one is the intensity of the uh, of the feedback uh, control correction and both of these two are uh, very much uh, an issue with this driving game so let's hear what Ross has to say about uh, the time lag here in the original episode I came out and said the steering was awful the controls are lagged they suck they just plain suck now before we get started first let me prove the steering wheel works all right, so here's some paved road now. I can take the curves on this just fine. Everything's smooth, buttery. So, wheel seems to be working all right to me. Okay, now we have the moment of truth. 
Test drive three, running on what's about the right speed. Let's check it out. Okay, something to look at here. You see this indicator? That shows where you're steering. So if I move that to the right, to the left, or the keyboard, then it follows with that. Now, I'm going to turn on joystick aiming. So this connects through the joystick. Joystick enable. Okay, now I'm going to turn it to the right. Left. Do you see that delay? How many seconds was that? So as you can see there, uh, time lag is uh, very much an issue in this, uh, in this game. Uh, but what about the second factor that contributes to diminishing the effectiveness of uh, feedback as a control mechanism? Uh, you'll remember that was uh, the intensity of the control correction. Uh, let's see what uh, Ross has to say about, uh, about that. All right, yeah, let's take off. Yeah, I'm going to have some good driving now. Okay, yeah, okay, I just entered second gear, so this is not like blow your mind speeds. Okay, let's try to take, uh, 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 I steer too soon, I steer too soon. Okay, try it again, try it again. Uh, 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 back, back, back. Back. Okay, can we make this curve? Can we make? Oh shit! I I oversteered. I oversteered. Okay. Okay. Oh oh oh! Oh my god! I'm back up to second gear again. Okay. Let's try and make. Oh sh. Okay. Let's try and make this curve. Oh jeez. Okay. This is God. Okay. I'm, it's like I'm on ice. All right. Okay. Just God. Okay, I'm doing the most subtle kind of turn. You see, I keep turning this more and more that boom, boom. It immediately just shoots down that way. Like, I'm, I was just doing this as gradual as I could. Well, there you have it. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Test Drive 3 has the worst steering of any driving game I've ever seen. Thank you, Ross. Uh, and that kind of concludes the example uh, from this uh, video game, uh, Test Drive. So let me just uh, summarize what we learned here. Uh, you know, feedback is a control mechanism. It is a control mechanism that we can use to well, control uh, a system. Uh, and the effectiveness of feedback as a control mechanism kind of uh, is um, affected by uh, two factors here. Uh, that is time lag and also the intensity of the control correction. So especially when these two are combined together, that can be quite devastating as we just saw in this uh, video game example. Uh, but that will be it for me. I think we talked enough about this part of the chapter in uh, Gardner. So let's just uh, stop the video here. Bye. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a good way to end videos. So yeah, just, um, that's it.